Today we'll be talking about BTB Savage and how karma can be rather instant. I'm Rugburn. And I'm Pickled Landon. And this is Streamstone Tourist. So today we're going to be talking about BTB Savage and how things escalated rather quickly and how his story ended rather abruptly all because of what seems like instant karma nothing is proven yet at this point but once i tell the story you'll kind of understand where i'm coming from as to why i personally believe and a lot of other journalists and podcasters also believe that this was just an act of karma so he's a rapper upward trajectory He's doing his thing. He's not necessarily mainstream yet, but he's also breaking his way out of the underground. He's starting to see some bread. He's becoming more and more successful. He's hit up for a feature, which I imagine at this point in his career is a rather typical thing for him to have happen. Guy comes up to the house or apartment, condo, whatever they're in, and he brings his uncle or family member or someone along those lines. As they're in there, the guy who hit him up to do the song is like, hey, I forgot some equipment. I'm going to go out and go get it. This is when BTB kind of gets this feeling in his stomach. He's like, ah, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know how I feel about this. This is just odd to me. So he locks the door behind the guy. Understandable. I'll, I like to have the door locked too at all times. I get it. The guy is acting weird, kind of sketchy. He's like, why are you locking the door, man? I ain't on none of that. I ain't on none of that. Which is what people say right before they rob you, you know? So that's just what it is. He's like, I'm not on no weird stuff. And he starts looking around. He's like, hey, how much for the chain? And, you know, he's like, uh, starting to feel real weird about it. And then guy's like, run it. So he tries to rob him, pulls out a gun. They start tussling over the gun. At some point, BTB claims that the gun slid. His baby mama grabs it, shoots him a couple times, still fighting over it. The door's getting shot through by, I guess, the guys that were there with him. And if you look at the pictures that he ended up flexing in later down the line, there's blood everywhere and there's bullet holes through the door. So the story seems to add up very well. All this happens somewhere along the lines, he gets shot in his elbow during the struggle. A few days after this incident happens, he does a Vlad interview. Vlad drops the interview where BTB Savage is going over the chain of events that led to this and he describes the whole story that I described in a longer format and is just explaining it from his perspective, right? A few days after that, that's when he posts that picture I was referring to. With the big stack of money, with right? With a big stack of money over the puddle of dried blood, bullet holes in the door, things like that. Well, maybe two, three hours later after posting that picture... His Mercedes Benz is shot up, riddled with bullet holes. Like, I'm talking like Call of Duty, like you're shooting down like a vehicle, kind of like bullet holes. Like, it, it looks crazy. He was pronounced dead the same day. It's an odd situation. And I think to not think that it was get back possibly is kind of naive. And I think that that's the first place police are going to be looking. I can see where you're coming from. I can also see the Vlad interview being one of the reasons why... He got found. Oh, I could see that too. I feel a little weird on this because I feel like he did the right thing and that he was being robbed and he just defended himself. I think he totally got But I, I, I feel like poking a bear is also something that is a thing. When you deal with this type of lifestyle and this type of living, to just be disrespectful to somebody that's dead, whether you did it justifiably or not, mm -hmm. you're going to reap a, you're going to get a reaction from that Yeah. in the world that you live in. You know what I'm saying? So I can't take away all the blame from him, but I think that he did the right thing initially. But I also have to put a little bit of, not blame, but a little bit of notoriety on Vlad's part because I think that whoever found him found him because of Vlad. Uh, I don't think they found him. If they if he had already pulled up to the apartment or wherever Well, I guess the notoriety at, is what I'm getting at. It put it out there. I don't want to blame the media for that. He chose to do that Vlad interview. Yeah. Everyone knows what Vlad kind of asked. Vlad asks the uncomfortable questions that no one wants to ask. Everyone calls him a fed and things like that. But really, you don't have to answer. Vlad has plenty of people that go on his platform and don't answer certain things. Again, not taking away from personal responsibility. I'm just saying he played a part in it. I think... The Vlad interview might have irritated them a little bit because he was going into detail on a rather large platform as to what took place. But I don't think that that was so much it as it was the picture of the blood and flexing money on it and kind of dissing the dead, which is a huge thing in hip hop nowadays. Everyone seems to want to diss the dead and put real names along with the diss songs and stuff like that. And as a consumer, I could see it. I mean, it gives it a feel of like authenticity and just some real griminess to it that a lot of 
listeners enjoy. So I, I can see from a marketing standpoint why you want to do that. But these people already know where you live. So he probably wasn't hard to find. My personal opinion, he posts that picture, stack of money. They already know where the condo is. So they're like, hmm, he's probably leaving there soon. My thought, they camp out nearby, lurk in the parking lot, lurk in a nearby area where they know they're going to see him exit and then follow the Mercedes and just riddle it with bullet holes and make a clean getaway. But I think they'll be caught. If it did have anything to do with them, they're going to start looking at who hit him up for that feature. Do you think, and this is a question I'm posing to you, do you think that if he hadn't dissed the dead and taken the picture with the money over the blood stain, that he would still be alive today? Yes. Just from my personal opinion, I think that he would be alive just on the fact that I think he took that picture and immediately posted it to Twitter. And I think think that that's what gave them the edge because I imagine he lingered in the condo for just a little bit longer and that gave the ops or the people that were trying to get him chance to drive to a nearby spot like I said lurk the parking lot whatever they had to do to get to him and be able to pretty much just hunt him down. As I mentioned earlier, I think personal responsibility is important and he did make decisions that led to this. Do you think that it would have been a better decision to stay somewhere else, to leave the city at least for a few days until this blew over? Now, I don't know if he needed to necessarily leave the city, but I would have definitely not stayed in that condo or apartment. I think the amount of money he was holding was enough to at least switch apartments or something like that, go to an undisclosed location for a little bit. I mean, maybe even take a vacation until some stuff was figured out. But the street code messes things up too, if you think about it. He's probably not talking. He doesn't want to give information. He doesn't want to seem scared. It's all this macho bravado. You, you got to act like if you're that kind of rapper, I mean, his name is Savage. He can't stray away from this because it's part of the image that he's trying to sell in his music career. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. You got to be this macho, tough guy all the time, not afraid to die. And unfortunately, I think that was a little bit of his downfall. I find that it's a, I guess, not so much like a hypocrisy. It's, it's just that they want you to know what they represent. But at the same time, they want you to keep a low profile verbally, not to say too much. You know what I'm saying? The street code. You don't snitch. You don't do any of these things. But at the same time, rep your set. You know, it's kind of like conflicting to me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this had nothing to do, at least that I know of, of any kind of gang affiliation. I think this was just purely a disrespect type of thing. Okay. As far as everyone knows, there was no gang affiliation involved with this as of right now. It was just, I think some guy's trying to hit a lick. It went south. He defended himself and is what it is. Is there anything you wanted to say in closing on this situation? No, I mean, I find it to be a tragedy still. I feel like he didn't necessarily need to die. I also feel also that... The first guy didn't need to die, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first guy needed to die just on the fact that Savage's kid was in the house. No, I just mean he shouldn't have been there doing what he was doing. Like, uh, if he had just made a better decision, then he himself would have been alive. We're looking at the results of poor decision making. I think BTB is like the lesser of two evils. Like, I don't even think what he did was wrong. I think the way he handled it after was wrong. Not wrong, but it drew attention to him. Most definitely. Fair enough. With that being said, careful who you talk about. Remember, always stay respectful. Let us know down in the comments what you think about this situation. Was it karma? Was it just coincidence? Don't forget to click one of our other videos. We've covered plenty of rappers and other interesting figures. That being said, I'm Rugburn. And I'm Pickled Landon. And this is Tombstone Tourist. Tourist.